After all the outstanding history that FUBU made, they somehow all of a sudden seemed to go away. Whatever happened to FUBU? How could such an influential and stylish brand just disappear all of a sudden? In this video, I'll run you through how FUBU started, how they got so popular, what happened afterwards, and the comeback of FUBU in 2021. The Founders of FUBU Before we go any further, let's take a quick look at these four innovative black entrepreneurs. Brands always start with the founders, so this is important. Carlton Brown Carlton used to have to go with his mother to her hat store to help her out when he was a little kid. At the time, he hated it and actually thought that he'd done something wrong and was being punished. But then he met one of his next-door neighbors, Damon John, and they started running around Queens, New York doing random hustles and odd jobs for people. The two met decades ago when they were only about five years old, so that hustler's mentality is very instilled into the both of them all the way up to this day. J. Alexander Martin this motivated entrepreneur recently talked with Black Enterprise Magazine in 2020 on the publication's 50th anniversary. He explained to them how the brand FUBU itself is now generally a licensing company, with the recent signage of multiple deals for clothing that are catered to men, women, boys, and girls of all ages. He went on to mention how the company currently supports the Black Lives Matter movement, and pointed out his distribution involvement with networks such as Comcast. Keith Perrin in the beginning, the FUBU organization on the outside seemed like an R&B group that was marketing its own apparel, so it's fitting that Keith is the founder of the very popular FUBU radio. But he also has a heart for the wellness of society. For example, Keith recently spent a generous amount of time speaking and collaborating socially with an organization called Care for the Homeless. His mere presence has undoubtedly influenced a substantiated amount of donations and other contributions to their cause. He's a man with a big heart. Damon John Probably the most celebritized person in the group, Damon John's role in the Emmy award-winning series Shark Tank has made the name FUBU last and stay ringing in the ears of fashion lovers everywhere. He's a best-selling New York Times author who also fights for causes such as dyslexia and has won dozens of awards for his ongoing entrepreneurial drive and influence on the next generation of dogmatic go-getters who want to be just like him. Damon is truly a role model for me and one of the reasons I ventured off into the startup space to start my own business. Damon John's Influence Ever heard of a family called the Kardashians? Well, guess who fired Damon once? Chloe! It's true. Back when Keeping Up With The Kardashians first started in 2007, he was the person responsible for choosing the clothes the ladies wore on the show. And while he was getting those various brands some major exposure, he would also slip in some of his own, such as the very popular Kugi apparel along with some FUBU. Damon was actually going to be on the show with the ladies, but he didn't because Shark Tank came along and he couldn't do both. It's not that he didn't want to, it's just that ABC had told him that he could only do one show, and it had to be with them if he wanted the opportunity. That's when Chloe fired him, but it was completely out of love. She said she would never get in my way, he said. Just like his childhood buddy Carlton, Damon got started by helping out his mom. Back then, the hardworking young man actually would sew hats and sweatshirts for her in their home living room. And as he got older and began to fall in love with hip-hop culture, the clothes he made began to reflect it. This music was today's Twitter, he said in one CNN Money interview. It was a way that kids were communicating about their hopes and their dreams and the plight of the community. What's intriguing is that the first sales of FUBU were not in and around neighborhoods like where he grew up. According to reports, it was actually grunge kids who were from places like Washington State and foreign kids from countries like Japan who were huge fans of hip-hop that purchased their first items of clothing. One of his biggest breaks came when he got invited to the White House by Barack Obama to be a part of what is called the My Brother's Keeper Initiative. This was way back in May of 2015. This put him among some of the top names in music and sports, and a few days later he received another honor that would publicly solidify his passion and drive for entrepreneurship, and also ignite a sense that he could have even more of an influence on undeserved communities like the one that he came from. Damon was named a President's Ambassador of Global Entrepreneurship. Is every entrepreneur makes an affordable step forward, no matter what direction it is, then they learn from that and they repeat it. 
We all knew the brand would be huge when LL wore that FUBU hat in that Gap commercial. Gap got mad and pulled the ad, but by then it was too late. The world had already seen LL Cool J wearing FUBU, and the rest is history. When FUBU first got its contract with Samsung, helping them launch Samsung's fashion financing and infrastructure platform, there was a requirement in the deal that they had to make no less than $5 million in the first 36 months. It didn't even take them a third of that time to do it, because in about a year the company had already brought in that and more, and was continuing to move forward with expanding the brands to items in women's wear as well as more upscale sophisticated clothing. In five years, sales with the Samsung partnership reached a breathtaking 200 and million dollars. That's what we call under-promising and over-delivering. FUBU also got a licensing deal with the NBA, and they called the clothing line FUBU NBA. Basketball and hip-hop culture will forever be intertwined, and the fact that so many players were already wearing baggy jumpsuits, headbands, and things of that nature on the sidelines, it was only right that the FUBU logo was placed right alongside the NBA logo on this stylish new gear. Why did FUBU disappear? So what happened? After all the outstanding history that FUBU made, they somehow all of a sudden seemed to go away. Whatever happened to FUBU? How could such an influential and stylish brand just disappear all of a sudden? Well, maybe it may have seemed that way, but the truth is FUBU was alive and well, just not so much in the United States as they were in their earlier days. Around 2003 is when FUBU had pretty much left the market in the US, and mostly all you would see on the shelves were their shoes. Damon told Complex Magazine that, at one point around 2001, it wasn't that they did too little to hurt the brand, but it was the fact they had done way too much. FUBU actually bought too much inventory and apparently saturated the US market to the point that it began to negatively affect their bottom line. With way too much inventory, their clothes started showing up in the clearance bins and discount retailers destroying their brand. That being said, the company itself didn't die by any means, and they actually just shifted their focus to other markets in places like Europe. They also made massive sales in Asia and actually raked in $200 million worldwide back in the late 2000s. That's when John and the FUBU crew decided that it was time to make a comeback to the US, and fans of the brand couldn't be happier. Looking back, this was definitely the right move. Check out my video on the rise and fall of LA gear. That could have happened to them if Damon had not been as smart maneuvering the ship as he did. Props for his foresight. FUBU is back. And that brings us to today. It's so nostalgic having FUBU around again, and their plan is to touch their same customer base who are now older and have grown up. According to the Wall Street Journal, they are also targeting Generation Z, and the well-loved baggy gear will be in collaboration with brands like Urban Outfitters and Puma. It would be fitting to have FUBU back, no pun intended, being that hip-hop culture from the 1990s has seemingly been emerging again from the younger generation over the past decade or so. It was like, all of a sudden, we started seeing 20-year-olds wearing what we wore at that age. Brands like Fila and Guess. Many people question whether or not the brand will even be marketable nowadays, and the answer to that would be to look at how well the aforementioned brands are doing right now, and to simply pay attention to the millions of 20-somethings who are making hip-hop culture look very 1990-ish today. Everyone was waiting around for someone to make an official announcement to make some sense of all the rumors that FUBU was coming back. Well, late last year, fans of the historic brand got their wish, because the founders finally took to Twitter in December 2020 and told the public that they were going to relaunch. When FUBU first came out, there was no internet or social media to help them get their name out there. Just imagine how things are going to go now. Very well, we anticipate, and we're all cheering for the original brand, one that is truly for us Buy us. Good luck, FUBU. So you know, I always say you should never stop trying to learn new things. So I hope you learned something new from that video. Now, if you're ready to level up and hear from business experts every week, give this video a like, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you soon.